The Mafia has been the subject of many movies, and there's a new film coming out that puts a whole new spin on mobsters such as Bugsy Siegel and Lucky Luciano. Lars Lundenberg went behind the scenes to find out what this new generation of gangsters look like. Lars? Well, Deborah, not so strangely, the movie is called Mobsters, and it features a whole new group of hot Hollywood stars. Each and every one of them is ready to stamp their trademark into the new find of film that gave Bogart and Cagney their most memorable movie roles. So what's wrong with this picture Disney recently ran promoting the Magic Kingdom? According to their thinking, it's cleavage, specifically the cleavage of Disney employee Heather Hines. Hines says on the day of the shoot, nobody noticed. The poor photographer, he had so much to look at because he wanted to get the entire car in the shot. There was smoke coming up behind us. There's just a lot that went into it, you know. I'm sure he wasn't looking to get a good shot with me and my uh, <laughs> To the Wisconsin native's delight, the ad ran in national magazines, including People and Newsweek. But Hines, who also works as a bathing suit and clothing model, did take some good-natured ribbing from her friends. A couple of my friends had mentioned, gee, Heather, you know, you're showing some cleavage there, aren't you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I guess I am, you know, and that's where I thought it ended. But it didn't end. The Magic Kingdom must have noticed, too, and so, voila, a cover-up resulted. This is the way the ad runs today. It's really no big deal. The picture wasn't that bad. But Disney does have the reputation to be squeaky clean, and... So I do really think that it was a good idea that they did airbrush it. In the meantime, Heather, who is hoping for an acting career, is enjoying the publicity. The publicity is pretty nice, yeah. <laughs> I guess I wish it wasn't because of my cleavage, you know. I wish it could have been for something better. <laughs> or even laughter. The movie Mobsters will be in the box office this summer, and it should launch a whole new generation of bad guys. And they're going to be very bankable at the box office. Deborah? So Lars. Did you think these young actors that played the um, gangsters, were they convincing? They were really convincing. I almost got scared just watching them <laughs> in the theater. <laughs> you know what theaters can be. The casting was very good. That's great. You know, it seems like it's just another movie about violence. I hope it's not that. It's a lot of violence in there, but unlike Terminator 2, that I believe was just violence, this was violence put in a context. There was a meaning, a reason for the violence. So, tell me. Were the suits as gorgeous as the untouchables? The untouchables? Oh, I don't know. I know nothing about clothing, nothing about suits. Sorry, I couldn't tell you about that. No, but you got a nice dress. <laughs> Thanks, Lars. <laughs> <laughs> Boris. <laughs> Here is news from the music world. What does a teenage werewolf look like when he grows up? Can Oprah survive on a million dollars a year? Will the Philadelphia sound play on forever? Could Michael Jackson make the Cola Boys dance in the street? Entertainment Tonight sails your way for Tuesday, October 27th, 1987. No, Doctor, that's not why I'm here. Good evening. Lucky for us, John and Mary are not here tonight. I'm Deborah Madgett. And I'm Boris Lee Kruthenach. Hollywood is a land of legends, and Woody Harrelson is busy writing his own. One portion of it unfolds weekly on Cheers. Another chapter opened with a feature film, Dark Hollywood. And the intimate chapter of Woody's personal life has the tabloid presses running overtime. This popular song of the 40s attests to the huge popularity of Arthur Murray, who had been, by his own account, a gawky and bashful teenager. The son of Jewish parents who'd emigrated from Austria, Murray grew up in East Harlem, New York, and took to ballroom dancing enthusiastically. In the 50s, he and his wife Catherine hosted a well-known TV show. You're always sure of a warm welcome at any Arthur Murray party. I always considered myself a teacher, able to break down uh, steps, analyze them, and make them simple. Tonight I'd like to teach you a wall step which you can do on a crowded floor or to fast music. It's called the balance step because you balance on one foot for three beats of the music like this. Watch. The series featured three celebrities each week, like then game show host Johnny Carson.
married 65 years, Arthur and Catherine retired to Honolulu some time ago, but they never stopped dancing, and the franchise dance studios still flourish today. Over the decades, customers of all sorts learned from Murray. The Prince of Wales came in for lessons when he, but he didn't, you know, he had somebody come in and make arrangements. Uh, Eleanor Roosevelt was a pupil. Although he resigned as president of the organization in 1964, millions of dancers will go on and on learning from Arthur Murray. Woody will be attending Sunday night's Emmy Awards. He is nominated as Outstanding Supporting Actor for Cheers. Sexy bachelors are always a hot topic. Entertainment Tonight has received an exclusive advanced copy of Us Magazine's 10 Sexiest. This year's list includes Platoon's Charlie Sheen, rock singer John Bon Jovi, Corbin Bernson, Mikhail Baryshnikov, the Chicago Bulls' Michael Jordan, Bruce Willis, Don Johnson, Perry King, Tom Hanks, and Tom Cruise. Now what's the difference between a bachelor and a single man? According to the article, a bachelor is competent and complete and never needy, while a single man doesn't eat his vegetables or change his socks every day. Mary Beth Hurt received cheers from the critics with three Tony Award nominated roles on Broadway and made her film debut in Woody Allen's 1978 movie Interiors. Her latest film appearance casts her as the insecure wife of an unfaithful husband. She finds herself defenseless when accused of his murder. If the environment, you know, the E word, seems like something too big, too overwhelming to be affected by you and me, and then think again. Tom Selleck leads viewers through a 20-question quiz of environmental do's and don'ts, questions ranging from where most of our garbage goes to what items are truly recyclable. Selleck says he hopes the special makes people see they can make a difference. I know a lot of people might, might be like me, that they say, well, gee, this, this problem's so big, somebody better do something about it, like some government or some big organization. And, and the, the real way that all problems ultimately get solved is through individual people. Selleck is joined by celebrity guests offering environmental tips, including Roseanne Barr, John Ritter, and the Muppets. Gee, Piggy, what can we do to help the environment? Let's not waste electricity! What? <laughs> Tom says he had some ecological questions of his own answered while making this special. You know, I always have a big dilemma in the supermarket when somebody says, paper, plastic. What's really right? So we answer that and many more questions. The best choice is to bring your own reusable canvas or string tote bag whenever you go to the market. Well, the one thing I found myself doing for a long time was, well, I'll get all this information and then someday I'll do it when I can really do it right. And I think the, the point, one of the things we try and say is, is just start. Defenseless opens in theaters on Friday and Hurt has just completed a small role in her husband's Paul Schrader's new film called Light Sleeper. That movie stars Susan Sarandon and Willem Dafoe and will be out next year. The Mafia has been the subject of many movies and there's a new film coming out that puts a whole new spin on mobsters such as Bugsy Siegel and Lucky Luciano. Lars Lundenberg went behind the scenes to find out what this new generation of gangsters looks like. Hello, Lars? Deborah? Not so strangely, the movie is called Mobsters and it features a whole new group of hot Hollywood stars. Each and every one of them is ready to stamp their trademark into the new final film. The final film that put Cagney and Bogart into their most memorable movie roles. So what's wrong with this picture Disney recently ran promoting the Magic Kingdom? According to their thinking, it's cleavage, specifically the cleavage of Disney employee Heather Hines. Hines says on the day of the shoot, nobody noticed. The poor photographer, he had so much to look at because we wanted to get the entire car in the shot. There was smoke coming up behind us. There was just a lot that went into it, you know. I'm sure he wasn't looking to get a good shot with me and my eye. <laughs> to the Wisconsin native's delight, the ad ran in national magazines, including People and Newsweek. But Hines, who also works as a bathing suit and clothing model, did take some good-natured ribbing from her friends. A couple of my friends had mentioned, gee, Heather, you know, you're showing some cleavage there, aren't you? <laughs> And I was like, oh, I guess I am, you know, and that's where I thought it ended. But it didn't end. The Magic Kingdom must have noticed, too, and so, voila, a cover-up resulted. This is the way the ad runs today. It's really no big deal. The picture wasn't that bad. But Disney does have the reputation to be squeaky clean, and 
So I do really think that it was a good idea that they did airbrush it. In the meantime, Heather, who is hoping for an acting career, is enjoying the publicity. The publicity is pretty nice, yeah. <laughs> I guess I wish it wasn't because of my cleavage, you know. I wish it could have been for something better. <laughs> the movie Mobsters will be in the theaters this summer, and it should launch a whole new generation of bad guys who will be very bankable at the box office. Deborah? So, Lars, did you think that these young actors played convincing gangsters? Yeah, the casting was wonderful. I almost got scared just watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, uh, it seems to me that this is just another um, movie about violence. Well, there is a lot of violence in the movie, but it goes right into the concept, and I think it's good. It's not just violence for the entertainment of it. It really has a message. Mm -hmm. So tell me, were the suits as beautiful as the ones in The Untouchables? The suits? The suits. I don't you know. know. I didn't see The Untouchables. I don't know if my clothing. I don't know. <laughs> I got a nice shirt. Well, thanks, Lars. Boris? Thank you, Debbie. Here is news from the music world. Latoya Jackson's new book, Growing Up in the Jackson Family, won't help her soothe relations with brother Michael. The New York Daily News reports that the book contains such items as Michael's pension for strange mementos, like soiled diapers from his nieces and nephews, and nose cartilage from the plastic surgery. Latoya also describes her mother as overprotective and calls her father a tyrant. Singer Tony Orlando is at the dawn of life as a new father. Orlando's wife, Francine, gave birth to an 8-pound, 11-ounce girl named Jenny Rose. It's the couple's first child. Orlando has a 20-year-old son from his first marriage. Join us tomorrow for a candid and informal interview with boxer Sugar Ray Leonard. We'll see how he relaxes as he prepares for his fight with marvelous Marvin Hagler. And to get you in the boxing mood, we leave you with a Sid Cherry's dance number from the MGM classic, It's Always Fair Weather. The song is Baby You Knock Me Out. And that's exactly what Sid's dancing will do. Goodbye. <laughs>